Just four months ago, creating a shot like this required a skilled VFX artist. But thanks to Photoshop's AI generative fill, anyone can now make such shots. However, achieving an impressive result depends on understanding basic composition. Without this, your shot may lack appeal. The upside is that mastering composition is pretty easy. Drawing from my traditional art background, I'm here to guide you in capturing stunning shots. And hey, who doesn't love making some of them apocalypses? We're essentially extending our sets using the timeless matte painting technique. Instead of manual brushwork, we're utilizing AI to transform our shots. Most importantly, we'll be covering off on the secrets known by famous artists that will separate your scenes from the button mashes. Now let me smack the devil out of this brush. Breaking, breaking, let us begin. When capturing your footage, it helps the AI to have a clear horizon line. You also must remember that you can't change anything directly behind your subject. So make sure you're happy to leave out this area of the shot. Of course, a green screen or rotoscoping out of your subject is an alternative. Let's start by dropping our footage in the timeline. Next, we want to take a snapshot of one of our frames by clicking the camera button here. If you don't have this icon, click the plus button. Then drag the icon onto your playback bar. Save the snapshot or image. I like using a TIFF format as it keeps the colors consistent. Let's open Photoshop. My footage was shot in 4K, but I want to double the size of my footage, so I'll create an 8K image. To do this, you'll need to create a canvas that's twice the size of your original footage. Import the snapshot by selecting File, Place Embedded, and selecting your snapshot. Awesome. Let's get a eyeing. We'll start by extending the canvas. With the selection tool, highlight nearly all the original image, leaving a little border. Go to selection, inverse to invert the selection. Having a little of the original image selected will help the AI. Then hit generative fill and generate. Pick the best one you like, or you can generate some more. This is just the base layer, and we'll be adding heaps to this as we go, so it doesn't need to be perfect. Before we start building up the scene, let's go over one of the most important things that will help make the composition stand out. Leading lines. Imagine a picture is like a treasure map, and leading lines are the secret paths that show you where the hidden treasure is. These paths can be created by nature, or by people. In photographs, paintings, and film, these special paths, like magic arrows, guide your eyes through the composition to the nugget of information at the end. So when we're adding objects using generative fill, we build them along imaginary leading lines. A good way to do this is selecting areas to fill using these shapes. Okay, let's get generating. The place to start with is the background. From my experience, the AI likes to build from the background to the foreground. I like to make sure you have some good depth by creating objects way off in the distance. As you build to the foreground, creating overlapping objects will help with giving a scene depth. It's important that everything in your scene serves a purpose. Before starting the scene, I went and got some reference from other movies to find out what makes a good post-apocalyptic scene. Destroyed buildings, rust, broken roads and highways, checkpoints and overgrown things. I use this as a text prompt too when generating my elements, but always making sure they created some sort of leading lines. Roads, of course, were really good for this. It's a lot of exploration too. Finally, I like to place some information in the scene in the foreground. It makes sense to stick this in the left side as Latin based languages like English read from left to right so the audience's eyes naturally fall there. So the audience see the sign, the old gas mask, then their eyes lead to the subject. And the last step before jumping back into Premiere Pro is removing yourself from the scene. The way I did this was used a clean plate. I scrubbed through some of the footage in Premiere Pro until I found a plain shot without me in it. Saved it as an image, then placed it in my Photoshop canvas. I selected the area around myself, then selected the layer mask button. Then I went around and tidied up the edges until it matched the scene. You can do this by selecting the area and hitting delete, or while the mask is selected, fill with black. Our matte painting is done, so go to file and export as either a JPEG or a PNG or a TIFF. And if you're enjoying this video, don't forget to hit subscribe. Now let's jump back into Premiere Pro. 
To start with, we'll bring our matte painting under the original piece of footage and drag it out to match the same size of the original clip. Next, we'll select the original footage and mask out the background, leaving just the subject and their shadow. As you may recall, we actually scaled the background plate to twice the original size, which means by reducing the scale of both the original and background plate to 50%, we end up with a wider shot. This will make adding camera movement later on much, much easier. My footage was shot on log, so I'm going to do a quick color adjustment, then add an adjustment layer to add a lookup table that will give it that apocalypse vibe. I always find matte paintings have this static feel to them, so I always like to add some sort of moving element, like a flag flapping in the distance, clouds moving, or in this case, to go with the Enderworld theme, burning stuff. to the apocalypse, Mr. Squidward. I hope you like leather. So I downloaded some smoke and fire elements and placed them into the scene along those leading lines. The elements are pretty easy to comp. All you need to do is scale them, mask them so that they appear behind some elements. This of course helps to sell that they live within the scene and then play with the blend mode that looks best. Usually if you have something dark like black smoke, you would use multiply. And for fire or something bright, you would use screen. For this element, I picked overlay and then dropped the opacity down to 60% so it fit the scene a bit better. Lastly, you'll want to match the sharpness. For example, if the smoke's off in the distance, it will need to match the blurriness of the environment around it. You can add the blurriness effect by going over to your effects, typing in Gaussian blur and dragging it onto your clip. Then increase the blurriness value until you find something that fits your scene. To end, smoke effects later. So with all these clips stacked up, my playback wasn't the best and I wanted to add some camera movement too down the track. So I nested the clip, then created an in and out point and selected render in and out. That made it run a bit better. So if you've managed to do all that, you can now call yourself a VFX artist. But we don't have to stop there, do we? There's one more step, which is one I find the most fulfilling. It's when the clip becomes a film. That's adding sound effects. Let's do a quick run through of what I added. Firstly, footsteps. I added some keyframes to reduce the volume as I walked away from camera two, just to sell the effect a bit more. I put in this distant rumble, followed by an explosion to give a bit of that scariness. Some ambient horror wasteland noise. I also chucked in the original garbage sound from my inbuilt mic on the camera. Don't know why, it just sounded good. Lastly, of course, I put in a little bit of a tune. Then the final little sprinkle is some camera movement. I decided to go with a roll and a zoom out. We'll start with the zoom. Head over to your effects panel, type in transform and drag that onto your clip. At the start of our clip, let's enter the value of 130 under scale and then drop a keyframe. We're gonna hit end to go to the end of our clip and we're gonna hit the reset button, which will bring it back to 100%. Take a look and you can see the clip is now zooming out. Let's head to the start of our clip again. Under rotation, we're going to put minus three and create a keyframe. Next hit end, we'll go to the end of our clip and we're going to enter zero under our rotation. This creates that Dutch angle at the beginning and hopefully making the audience feel a little off. While the zoom out reveals the sign and the gas mask, giving the audience some information about the environment. And that folks is how you create a deserted city. If you're interested in some more cool AI tools for Premiere Pro, check out this video.